Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Rishi Gupta. I'm a research fellow at the Asia Society Policy Institute in New Delhi. In this discussion today, I have with me Ambassador Rakesh Sood to talk about the forthcoming visit of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to France on July the 14th. Uh, Ambassador Sood served as uh, India's ambassador to France and uh, played a key role in leading bilateral strategic dialogue. He has over 40 years of experience in the field of foreign affairs, economic diplomacy, and international security issues. Ambassador Sood also served as India's first ambassador permanent representative to the Conference on Disarmament at the United Nations in Geneva. And until recently, Ambassador Sood was a distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation. So thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Sood, for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Ambassador Sood, as you're aware, Prime Minister Modi will be on a visit to France at the invitation of French President Emmanuel Macron, where PM Modi will be the guest of honor on France's uh, National Day on July 14th. PM Modi's visit to France coincides with the 25th anniversary of the strategic partnership between India and France. And today, the bilateral ties with France have deepened in the areas of defense, security, space, and civil nuclear cooperation, which fundamentally constitutes uh, the principal pillars of uh, the strategic partnership. So this brings me to my first question to you, Ambassador Sood, is uh, how has France become so critical in India's geopolitical calculus? What do you say? Well, you know, I think we have to go back a little bit into history because I think with the end of the Cold War, what we saw was an emerging unipolar moment. Now, the French have been strong believers in multipolarity. And uh, the French were not particularly comfortable with the unipolar world that uh, they were witnessing. Because after all, during the Cold War, it was an ideological uh, kind of a conflict between the United States and its Western allies led on one side and with the Soviet Union and its Eastern European allies on the other side. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, it became a unipolar world. The French often used to talk about the need for multipolarity because, uh, in fact, uh, one of the French foreign ministers at that time, uh, Hubert Védrin, he, in fact, described uh, the United States as a hyperpuissance, as a hyperpower, you know. So, and uh, I think that was also India. India has also traditionally looked at, preferred a multipolar world, and that is where the ideological convergence comes in. So, in fact, um, when you say that it is twenty-five years of our strategic partnership, it began actually in 1998 and with the visit of President Chirac in January of 1998, when he was in India as the chief guest at our Republic Day Parade. So, and that is what led to this convergence. So it was driven by a sense of a worldview that was somewhat shared as it were. And I think that is what lends it its character. So I think it is only fitting that 25 years later, when uh, at the French National Day, the Bastille Day on 14th July, Prime Minister Modi will be there to look at the strategic partnership that was established a quarter century ago. As you mentioned that uh, India and France have completed 25 years of uh, uh, strategic partnership, which actually started in 1998. So uh, this brings me to my next question is, uh, what is the current state of India-France strategic partnership? Well, you know, traditionally there have been four pillars um, of the India-France strategic partnership. There was, of course, the space, you know, space technology. France has been an old partner in space with this role since the 1960s, 70s. Um, the second relationship was, the, the second pillar was the defense pillar. We have purchased 
military equipment from France. You know, Mirage 2000s were purchased in the 1980s. Before that, earlier helicopters and so on. Uh, so, and that that was another pillar. We've also done the Scorpion deal. We, you know, there is a host of now the Rafal deal and so on. So, defense is another pillar. Nuclear, of course, became a pillar because uh, France was uh, pushing for the NSG waiver for India in the nuclear supplies group. We've signed a bilateral agreement. There is with Electricité de France, which has taken over Arriva at Jaitapur. There is uh, the project with regard to uh, the six nuclear power reactors. So these are all big projects. And the fourth was counterterrorism. Counterterrorism became extremely important with intelligence sharing and so on. Now, adding to these are new areas. First, most important is climate change. You would recall that it was at the Paris meeting, uh, at the Paris climate change meeting, that Prime Minister Modi launched the International Solar Alliance, something which France has been extremely supportive of. So I would say that some of these issues like climate change are new issues. Clean energy, climate change are new issues that have been added to issues like nuclear, space, defense, counterterrorism, and I would say Indo-Pacific. The salience of Indo-Pacific has only emerged very strongly during the last decade. In 1998, Indo-Pacific as a term did not have that kind of uh, acceptability. So there are a whole host of these strategic sectors which constitute the meat of our strategic partnership. So coming to PM Modi's visit to Paris, uh, what are the likely outcomes that you see uh, that this visit uh, will result in, sir? Well, it is difficult to predict, quite honestly. Um, but I would say that there would be a lot of good, meaningful conversation in all of these. It is quite possible that we may see some new announcements uh, in the defense field. We could also see new announcements in the field of green hydrogen, which would be which would reflect the shared uh, priority that we attribute to addressing climate change. Space is another area because, as you know, um, India is uh, now looking at uh, you know bringing out encouraging more and more private sector involvement in our uh, space sector. Nuclear, I would expect that both leaders will want to give a decisive push to the Jaitapur uh, negotiations, which have been somewhat moving slowly. And I think uh, both leaders will want to do that. Now, this is at that level of strategic partnership. Over and above that, I would think at a people-to-people -people level, there could be some interesting developments because now that uh, UK is no longer part of EU post-Brexit, France often sees itself as the entry point for India into EU. You know, earlier with Britain there, um, Britain being in the EU um, and the affinity with regard to language, so a lot of Indians would go to Britain and use that as an entry point into continental Europe. Now, that sort of link isn't there. So France, but then for that, France has to look at some of its own provisions with regard to facilitating student visas, having more flights, direct flights between France and India, uh, you know, providing, uh, let us say, say, two years of uh, a work visa for an Indian student who goes and does his MBA or goes and does his uh, engineering or something like that. So some of these things, if we see some forward movement in this, then I think it will expand the possibility of greater people-to-people um, -to -people connect. There is a people-to-people -people connect in terms of uh, cultural interests, you know, both in India, you have an interest in, let's say, the French film festival or the theater festival at Avignon. So many fashion shows, Indian designers have been going 
to participate in French fashion shows. And the French have been very interested. They have honored Indian artists. They have honored Indian filmmakers and so on. So there is that connect. But at a people-to-people -people level, I would think that there should be a greater initiative on the part of the two leaders. So I would say that this is a pretty full agenda. See, the important thing with India-France relations is that it is not important that we agree on everything. Like, there may be differences on Ukraine. and But what is important is that these differences are discussed in private and never aired in public. And I think that is the strength of a resilient strategic partnership, which is what India and France enjoy. So, do you think uh, any discussions on uh, Ukraine might come up? That might be in media. I I am certain that uh, Prime Minister Modi will want to get a French perspective on Ukraine, but I don't think that the French are going to be pushing India to take any stand on anything like that. Because, as I said, the strength or the resilience of a strategic partnership is, is that you can have differences, but these differences are only discussed in private and not aired in public. And that, I think, is a hallmark of uh, India-France relationship. We don't go to media with our differences. So, thank you so much, sir, uh, for thank highlighting it and uh, for giving your time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We look forward to the visit. Thank you, sir.